Hey there, my web crafting wizards. Designing a website is really, really difficult, especially when you get started and you don't really know like which direction you can take it. And we essentially get stuck into creating the same designs over and over again. Let me show you a quick example and tell me if you're guilty of it. Be truthful, probably seen this design over and over again, where you have an image to your right and then you have your text and maybe a short description of what the product is on the left with a big order now button, all right? You're gonna see this a lot and a lot. So what I thought I'll do is I'll create three different designs and using some tips and tricks, I'll show you how you can kind of separate them and give them a different look. So let's get going. Okay, so three websites, first one, let's go. So the first one I decided to do kind of like a sneaker landing page, okay? Like Nike shoes or something. All right, sit back, grab a cup of coffee or whatever drink floats your boat and let's get going. So I'll guide you through this whole process. That's not actually me doing this in real time in case anyone wondered, that's sped up. But that would be impressive. Uh, okay, so what am I doing here? Um, essentially to break away from that, you know, simplistic design where you just have an image to the right and some text to the left with a button. What you can do is start experimenting with typography. And what I'm doing here is I'm making a site for Nike. So I'm thinking sneakers, I'm thinking it's fun, it's bold, it's car colorful, right? Uh, so I'm picking big, bold texts and I'm just centering it, okay? It doesn't have to be anything complicated. I'm not really gonna spend 10 hours on this. I'm just trying to get a fundamental idea down to see where this uh, design could go. So again, I'm choosing bold, big text here. And now what I'm doing is trying to do some blending modes on the text as well, because I essentially want to have a shape that's going to come up and down, and that's going to affect the color of the text. So essentially what I want to show with this is I'm adding these images here, and using this blending mode, I can change the color of the shoes as well, whilst also changing the text, which is going to look pretty cool. I also, so this is the shape, as you can see, a big blob. Essentially what I thought I was going to go for was doing some sort of, you know, black and white mixture because I added the texture to the website as well. It might be a bit hard uh, to show up on camera, but I added it here, but I ended up not liking it as much. So then I had the idea of, hey, I can actually do the color changing with just a shape and blending. I think it's color burn if you want to give it a shot. But here it is. Here's the final product. So as you can see, that's the result. I'm happy with it. Uh, from here, again, this is like getting the idea down. And then from here, you can take it a step further. So if you're not happy with the images, again, it's nice to kind of throw together the idea. But once you like how it looks, you can take the shoes, for example, and then just recreate it in 3D just to have more quality to it. Or you can create professional photo shoots of it. For the next one, I thought I'd make a photography website, okay, someone's portfolio. So I thought, how would I sell this the best? And I thought, well, in this case, it's not really about the text, it's about the image. So I put the image dead jab in the middle, and I was like, I'm not gonna move it from there, I'm gonna work around it. So maybe try setting yourself a limitation. Have the image in the middle and then work the text around it and just see what you can come up with. In this case, I ended up putting the name right there, big in the middle. I was trying to do some blending mo modes. None of them worked out, unfortunately. Tried to do ba background gradients as well. And then I thought, hey, actually it looks quite nice on black background. I want to take away all the focus from the background and just put it on the image and on the name. I thought it would be really cool to just have the text for the images right in front there with a nice gradient that kind of resembles the colors of from the image as well there. When you click on one of the buttons, it just changes the image as well. So that was the idea. And whilst you're also moving your mouse around the screen, I also wanted to add kind of this 3D animation to it. So I'll let you see kind of how this goes and you'll see the final product. For the last one, you guessed it, I tried to make an Apple-like website. So cameras, lights, action. I tried to do that with gradients to kind of give this effect like, Poo, here's the product. So I wanted to keep it super straight and vertical here. Just kind of how you read the book. Text down, boom, boom, super easy, accessible for everyone. So in, in this case, I just wanted to keep simplicity in mind and just really showcase the products with the images and the features. So I thought, hey, I'll just have a big, 
image of the phone here with all the different colors. Uh, the background kind of works with that. I should have spent a bit more time maybe with it. And then straight on the next next page, I thought I had these fun, bubbly, colorful cards. Okay, and I just duplicated these a bunch of times, found some images of the iPhone online, and then I just tried to see like, what are the best selling features of the iPhone? And then I just started replacing the images and adding some text, a pop of color, and boom, 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 and boom, 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 we got an Apple design all done. So those are my three designs. I'm quite happy with them. And from here on out, you can just keep expanding and expanding on them. So for the iPhone website, for example, I'd probably replace the images and create 3D models for each. And that will just allow you to do anything pretty much. On the Apple website, as you can see, they have these custom 3D animations. Well, that's how that's done. And for the Nike website as well, like it's still a bit bare bones. I would probably implement kind of like that gallery as well that I had in the previous video if you want to check that out. But again, it's just about putting down an idea and then see how far you can expand it. And if you need to put a limitation on as well, just like I did with the second website and see what you can build around it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, bye bye. -bye.